And I call this the first rule of functions. The first rule of functions. First rule is that they should be small. The second rule is they should be smaller than that. I want to turn the knob up on this really high. I want the function small, really small. How small should a function be? What's the, what's the proper size for a function? How many lines should it be? Does anybody remember when we first got screens? There was a time we didn't have screens. We wrote our code on paper. In the early days of programming, programmers did not know how to type. We had no keyboard skills. We wrote the code in pencil and we had other people enter it into punch cards for us. But then eventually we got screens and we started typing ourselves. That was in the 80s. And those screens, a typical screen, was 24 lines by 72 columns. Why 72 columns? Yes, part, holes on the punch card. There were 80 columns on a punch card. The last eight were sequence numbers, so we only needed 72 on the screen. That's the reason they were 72. And the rule came about. Your function should fit on a screen. Well, that meant that the functions had to be about 20 lines of code. Is that the right size? I have a better rule. The function should do one thing. The function should do one thing. That's the rule for how big a function should be. It should do one thing. But now we need to define what one thing is. What's one thing? A function does one thing if you cannot meaningfully extract another function from it. If a function contains code and you can extract another function from it, then very clearly that original function did more than one thing, because you could extract something from it. So I want all my functions to do one thing, and that means I must extract and extract and extract and extract until I cannot extract anymore. I'm going to take all the functions in the system and explode them down into a, a tree of tiny little functions optimally extracted, maximally extracted. At this point, there are people in the room going, if I did that, I'd have thousands of little tiny functions. I would drown in a sea of tiny little functions. No, you will not drown in a sea of tiny little functions. And there's a simple reason why you're not going to drown in a sea of little tiny functions, and that's you're going to have to give those functions names. You have to name those functions. And as you name them, you'll have to move them into appropriately named classes and appropriately named packages and appropriately named source files and modules. And you will create a tree, a semantic tree of functions that you can follow by name. So you highlight that, highlight that indent with your mouse and you invoke the extract method function of the IDE. And the IDE will come back with an error message and say, I can't extract it because it changes two variables. And I can't extract code that changes two variables. Well, what are you going to do now? Make them global. You think I'm joking, don't you? <laughs> but now, look, you can extract that. And you can extract this one into another function. So now I've got two functions. I've extracted them out. I can take that one and extract it. Yeah, I can take that one and extract it. And I've got something very interesting here now. I have a set of functions, all of which manipulate a set of variables. What's it called when you have a set of functions that manipulate a set of variables? It's called a class. There was a class hiding inside this big function. And if you think about it, of course there are classes that hide inside big functions, because big functions have a whole bunch of variables and a whole bunch of indents that manipulate those variables. So, of course, every large function is really a class with a bunch of little tiny functions inside it. And if you start extracting and extracting and extracting, you will begin to identify these classes that you would otherwise not have identified, and you'll be able to put them in appropriate names and spaces and allocate them nicely and partition your code. Wait, this is what happens when you start to extract and extract and extract. You find the true object-oriented structure of the system that you're trying to design.